Welcome back at TV on the topic of hyperacusis and loud noises. Many patients with tinnitus suffer from hyperacusis, that is to say, they are overly sensitive to sound. This means that they perceive sounds as too loud, that they use to tolerate well, or that other people can tolerate well. Affected people react sensitively or even experience pain in response to many everyday noises that should not actually be disturbing. For this reason, many people avoid public places such as restaurants or movie theaters or wear hearing protection when they are at these places. For example, the sound of the vacuum cleaner or traffic noise is difficult to bear. A related phenomenon accompanying hearing loss is the so-called recruitment. In this case, the hypersensitivity to sound is present in the frequency of the damaged cells in the inner ear. A typical example is when hearing impaired people do not understand something when spoken softly, then ask the other person to speak louder. However, the louder speech could then be perceived as shouting. In contrast, in hyperacusis, the hypersensitivity to sound is usually not limited to the damaged frequencies. All perceptions of all sounds are affected. If one reacts angrily to certain sounds like, for example, the bodily noises of another person, it is called misophonia. If one is afraid of a certain sound, like the barking of a dog, it is called phonophobia. With all types of hypersensitivity to sound, it is important that it does not lead to avoidance behavior. So, for example, one should not stop going to the movies and one shouldn't wear hearing protection at normal noise levels. The goal is to gradually get used to sounds that are not harmful for your hearing. But what noise is so loud that it could damage your hearing? The lowest perceivable volume is around 10 decibels, which is roughly equivalent to our breathing. Volumes below 60 decibels, for example a running television, are not harmful to our hearing long term. However, they can impair our ability to sleep and concentrate in the short term. In a case of long-term exposure to sound, such volumes could also lead to stress. From 65 decibels, first damage can occur. For example, long-term exposure to sound at 65 decibels can lead to an increased risk for cardiovascular diseases. A hairdryer or a passing car are at about 80 decibels. If we are constantly exposed to 85 decibels, damage to our hearing cells can even occur. At 120 decibels, hearing damage can occur after a short period of time. To illustrate, the music during a concert is at about 110 decibels and working with a jackhammer without hearing protection at 105 decibels. So now we know that hearing damage depends on the intensity of the sound and on the duration of exposure. As a reminder, hearing issues promote the development of tinnitus. Avoid sounds that damage your hair cells, like sustained sounds of 85 decibels. But what can you do to protect your ears? You could walk away, change the volume, or use hearing protection. You should be careful with headphones. Here, a strict rule of thumb is not to turn the volume higher than 60% and not to listen to headphones for more than 60 minutes a day. Sometimes, a noisy environment causes the tinnitus to intensify. This can happen due to the auditory system increasing its sensitivity. The auditory system needs a while to reduce the sensitivity again or a quiet environment makes tinnitus be perceived as louder, as you already might know. Observe whether you pay more attention to tinnitus after such situations. This is counterproductive. At the latest, the tinnitus will be back at its usual volume within a day or so. So. We have learned today that excessive exposure to loud sounds can damage our hearing, but that doesn't mean that you should withdraw yourself from all sounds. In the next video, we'll look at some of the myths about tinnitus. See you soon. Bye.